Uh, growing up, I, w I didn't take notes of sh uh, shows, whether it was a hardcore show, punk show, metal show. I just kind of went with my friends because um, they were playing in bands at the time. And uh, being growing up in Yonkers, I would come down and see a show, uh, usually in the city. And I distinctly remember No Redeeming Social Value because that name always stuck with me through the years. Uh, so they were definitely the first hardcore band I've seen that's of note. I'm sure my friend's band were opening that show somewhere in the city. I couldn't tell you the club, um, but I'm sure it was somewhere in Manhattan. Uh, and shortly after that, this probably would have been Hatebreed. Up where I live, there were two clubs that I went to frequently. Uh, the Lowdown in Mount Vernon and the Haunt in Yonkers had a lot of good metal, like death metal, black metal, hardcore shows. Uh, as for venues or clubs that I've played at that don't exist anymore, definitely Trash Bar and Grand Victory. Those, those two spots, always a good time. Tons of memorable shows at those places. Uh, for past, well, kind of present too. Got to give it to Ratbones. Um, but I don't know the kid's name. He's always at the A7 shows that have been going on. He's got long hair and he's always doing handstands, walking through the pit on his hands. It's just being on stage and looking up and just seeing legs dangling in your face. Um, it's a riot. I mean, this dude, he, he can do spin kicks gracefully. It's, he's definitely a pleasure to watch from the stage aspect. Love that dude. Everyone says Mackie and Earl, it's a given. We're gonna put them aside. Um, I'm gonna go with Chuck Biscuits. Uh, his resume speaks for itself. Early Black Flag days, briefly with the Circle Jerks, DOA of course, Social Distortion, one of my favorite bands. He crushed it with all of them. I think we can give it to Dave Lombardo now. I mean, everyone knows him from Slayer, but he's had stints in Suicidal and The Misfits. I've seen him play with both live and the dude at his age still crushes it. Um, and if I could be so indulgent, I'm going to say Drummer Mike from the Car Bomb Parade. The dude is a blast to play with. Musically, we're so in sync. We nerd out on obscure vinyl records. Uh, he'll come to practice and say, oh, I'm going to do this drum fill like this section of the Poison Idea song, and I'll know exactly what he's talking about, and we're just we're locked in. Uh, there's four that pretty much got me to where I'm at now. Johnny Ramone basically taught me how to play guitar, learning all the old Ramone songs, putting chords together. Uh, after that, Mike Ness uh, expanded upon that, taught me like the art of songwriting, incorporating leads and like bluesy guitar scales into songs. Tony Iommi brought the heavy, just crushing riffs. And after that, James Hetfield, just that right hand power, just hammering away, uh, brought some technicality to playing. Uh, so those four got me to where I'm at today. Uh, yeah, I always keep my ear to the underground. I, I, don't, I don't shut out any bands you know, that, are, that are up and coming. I don't stick to the old school. Uh, there's a band out in Cali called Torso. Straight edge, vegan, female fronted. So I know right away a lot of hardcore dudes are like, I don't want to hear that. But they are crushing. They are disgustingly good. Um, and a little more locally from Long Island, I've been really into the fight and uh, rule them all. Uh, out of step, minor threat. Um, SSD, force down your throat. And uniform choice, no thanks. A7. Hands down, that we've played a lot of cool shows, um, and I, I went to a bunch of the shows before we got asked to play, and I knew that room was special just from seeing those shows happen, and then finally getting to play a couple times earlier this year, it was just a magical experience. I can't really say anything other than that. Uh, I got two, and they actually weren't even that long ago. Um, Flag with TSOL opening for them, Never thought I'd get to see Keith Morris and Chuck uh, playing with playing Black Flag songs with Dez on guitar, Bill Stevenson on drums, Steven Egerton filling in on guitar. Uh, that was just incredible. And they, they kill all those songs, even, even the later Henry stuff like My War. Keith Morris could have written that song. It's incredible. Uh, and a few years ago, uh, The Misfits in New Jersey. 
original lineup, Murphy's Law, Suicidal Tendencies, Harley doing a Cro-Mag set. I mean, that's, that's like a legendary show lineup right there. And they all were great, even three years ago, whatever it was. Carbon Parade never stops moving. A pandemic does not stop us. As soon as this thing hit and we were all getting laid off from work and we're being reduced to part-time, I told these guys I was gonna write them the most crushing songs that we have to date. And we now have nine that we are working on. Uh, we're gonna be in the studio next month. We're gonna record for uh, a new single or EP release for probably early next year. Uh, we're gonna shoot a new music video. And basically, we're just going to keep doing what we do. Do what you love. Find something that you're passionate about and just go after it. Because life is painfully short. And personally, I don't want to be one of those dudes, 80, 90 years old, on my deathbed going, man, I wish I hadn't spent so much time in the office with my boss giving me shit, or glad I put in all that overtime Money and, and, and stature and all that stuff doesn't matter. Uh, find something that you love and just run with it. If you want to travel, if, you, if you're an athlete, if you're music, just, just go for it full force.